Audio Live, RTC Channel 5, and we'll have audio and video soon on RTC Channel 4, and that's why Scott's here. Morning, Scott. Good morning, sir. Nice to have you back in the studio. Always a pleasure. Got your own coffee cup fired up, ready to go, right? That a boy. Good, good deal. Going to talk with Brian Johnson from the Fulton County Community Foundation, also part of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Morning, Brian. Good morning, Tom. Thanks for being here. It's kind of damp out there this yeah, morning. We got on the a little dampness going so. on. You know, so, but hey. Do we have to pay royalties if we say this is a cold November rain? We, or could, uh, we could say that. We tie could, that into uh, the we song. We have to pay Elvis' estate oh, for that. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do that. So Could be a so, lot worse. Yeah. So, hey, we got a lot of things going on at the foundation. Of course, do. it's it's getting to be that time of year. End of year is coming up. So I'd encourage folks to um, think about um, if you have an opportunity to make a contribution um, and save some taxes. Um, now's a good time to talk right. to your financial planner or your accountant and say, hey, how much, Get would, it started. How much could I save if I right. made a gift Get here? It started. So, so just put that in there. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But um, one thing I want to remind folks about, um, scholarship applications will be available um, on our website. Um, and I know right now they're not quite yet, but as this re-airs on Channel 4, there'll probably be some folks watching that after right. they're available. So I'd encourage you to check that out, nicf.org. Um, they should be available sometime after December 1st. Um, so high school students, if you're looking at going to college um, or pursuing some sort of degree or certificate or further training, I'd encourage you to check that out. Um, those applications are available online. The whole process is completed online. There are some of them that require some information, um, things like essays or maybe a letter of recommendation. So good idea to check those out and um, look at that ahead of time. So I believe it's only a month and a half left in 2017. It is, it is. Wow. It's, it's getting right down to it. It so. is. So, well, you mentioned that. Um, we have a big event coming up, Giving Tuesday. Yeah, that's always fun. That's a fun time. Of course, we have... Um, Black Friday. I don't, I'm, I'm sure you're probably out at the stores in line at 4 a.m. that morning and <laughs> getting ready to, do, to get some of your deals. I'm not out there at 4 a.m. Okay. I'll say well, that. I'm, I'm in that same boat, not out there at 4 a.m. So, <laughs> um, but we have so we have um, Black Friday. And then you have Small Business Saturday, right. which um, encourage folks to shop at the local businesses around here. By the way, we, um, uh, in conjunction with the Rochester Sentinel, we have some very nice promotional items supporting Small Business Saturday. Yeah. And we'll be taking those out around, but if somebody listening to us would like to have some of those, I mean, we have pens, we have pads, we have rugs, we have just all kinds of signage yeah. and things like that. So... They'd like to have some of that, and we don't have to get to them. Have them give us a call here at the station. Yeah, it's supporting it's, Small Business Saturday. Yeah, it's a good way to support our own community. And when you look at, um, I mean, the Community Foundation is built around the idea of keeping things local. That's right. And um, part of what we do is support our local businesses um, so that um, our community can prosper. You so bet. that's it's really a great thing. So, so we go from Small Business Saturday, and then of course Cyber Monday. Everybody's shopping online. <laughs> so then, what do we follow that up with? Well, finally, Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday. <laughs> Giving Tuesday. November twenty eighth. Right. Giving Tuesday is the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving, um, and the idea is that um, we have all these shopping days, but. Giving Tuesday is kind of a day to give back. Um, it's been something that's been going on for a handful of years in the Community Foundation. This is the third time that we've actually celebrated this locally. So um, Giving Tuesday is kind of our way of celebrating the holiday gift season. And we, ha we often hear from people who say, the person I'm buying for has everything they already need. They don't want any more stuff. What can I do? <laughs> And so one option would be giving to a fund that supports something locally that that person is excited about. So um, Giving Tuesday is an opportunity to do that. Um, our office will be open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, that day. We'd encourage folks to come out. We'll have some treats available, some breakfast food. Um, from 11 to 2, we'll have lunch Excellent. Um, served in the office. Um, and I think around 9.30, WROI is going to be there to, to broadcast live and hear some of the things. And this is just a good opportunity for us to um, let the community know some of the things that the foundation have done. We're working on 
putting a year in review video together. You know, we'll you've be done showing. that in years past, Brian, and that's been very, very uh, informational. Let's say, yeah, it, about the foundation. It's really a neat way to see some of the it things is. that. Um, a lot of people don't realize all the areas that we touch. Um, the different projects, we were just up in Lake Bruce yesterday making a presentation for a grant um, that that they are awarded. So some of the different areas that folks may not be necessarily familiar with in the community about where have received support from the foundation, all the, all the funds that have been given. Um, of course, we talk about our community grants. Um, looking at the um, over $150,000 in community grants given out to projects amazing, throughout the year. Amazing. And it's wonderful to see that. And then the other bonus is, of course, we mentioned community grants. So our community funds, um, this is the third year we've been able to offer a match for those. So those are the funds that donors have given to us and say, please use these for current needs. We don't want to restrict what you use these for. We want you as a board and our grants committee to decide what's the most pressing need in our community right now. So we actually have a dollar for dollar match for the first $25,000 given to community funds. Um, those can be large or small donations. Um, and if somebody's interested in creating a new community fund okay. um, on that day, we'll have the opportunity to do that as well. So, um, But I encourage folks, if nothing else, stop by, have some breakfast, have some lunch, have a snack, um, see some of the things that sure. the foundation has done. We'll have some board members there throughout the day to be able to talk with folks about about, um, what the foundation has done, but it's it's really a, a great way just to kind of celebrate some of the things that we've been able to do throughout the years. Absolutely. So um, it's it's kind of an exciting time. So again, um, Tuesday, November twenty eighth, from eight a.m. to six p.m. at our office. Um, we'll be looking forward to um, starting off the holiday season with that. Very so, good. Well, today we want to kind of continue the conversation of the history of the foundation. Of course, in October of 2018, we'll be um, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation and also the Fulton County Community Foundation. Um, and last month, we talked a little bit about how community foundations started, arose from the need of, of funds that couldn't be used in a community. And so a foundation was formed in Cleveland. And then um, Lilly Endowment, of course, was formed in, in 1937 by members of the Lilly family. And the way that the Community Foundation got here is kind of interesting. Lilly Endowment said, we really want to be able to start, help communities start their own foundation. We don't want to be the ones in Indianapolis deciding what's important in Rochester and Kiwana and Fulton and Akron and Leiders Ford. We want... Sure these communities to be able to do that. So Lilly offered what they called a gift initiative, Give Indiana Funds for Tomorrow. And I kind of want to pick it up with some of the firsts that okay. the foundation do has done. So, of course, we were started in 1993. Um, the Northern Indiana Community Foundation at that point was a three-county um, coalition of Fulton, Miami, and Cass counties. Um, those counties came together and actually um, applied for and received the last position in Lily's um, gift phase one. Um, and so those three counties worked together to um, be able to form the community foundation in 93. And then when we start talking about firsts, so obviously if you're a community foundation, you had a first gift. That came in 1994, thanks to the Baxter family. Baxter family, um, right. I remember that. Ernie Park and Fran Baxter um, were the very first donors to say, hey, we believe in this organization. We want to start this. Um, and they started the Baxter Inc. Fund. Of course, longtime owners um, of the Baxter Drugstore here in town and just great community supporters. You bet. And the neat thing about that is that is one of those community funds that we talk about. So that gift that was given in 94 is still being used to make grants today um, for some of these community projects. So so it, it, very exciting time. That was the first gift to the Northern Indiana Community Foundation in Fulton County um, in 1994. So then if you have gifts, what can you do? You can make grants. So looking back, um, we actually had um, our first grants were given out in 1996 okay. to community projects. Um, the recipients were the Akron United Methodist Church. They did a green project 
um, the Fulton County Leadership Academy um, for some of the classes that they offer. Um, I was able to take that class in 2008 and, and thoroughly enjoyed it, learned a lot. Um, of course, Hope Hospice was in the process of forming at that point, and we were able to support that organization. Um, and then um, Kappa Delta Phi um, sorority had a um, project where they helped provide some coats and boots for kids in the area. So those were our first um, our first grants that we were able to give out um, as a big part deal of the, at that time. It, too. it was, yeah. and when you start thinking about these are local dollars decisions made by local people and we know that they're going to be spent locally it's really it really puts a great value on that so um, that was kind of an exciting time not only the first gift but also when you can start giving money out it's it's an exciting time to see some of those projects that come about and and you think about like the leadership academy how that has impacted our community just the number of of individuals in our community that have gone through that um, and been able to benefit that and also make connections through that class. So it's been very exciting. So, And then another first um, was the Lilly Endowment Community Scholars Program. And that's still going on. It is. Um, Lilly announced that at the end of 1997 okay. and awarded the first scholarships in 1998. Um, part of what Lilly does... Um, they really have three main goals, um, community development, which the foundations fall under, um, religion, they support different um, religious initiatives, and then also education. And so this fit under the education piece. They said, we really need to help increase the attainment level of Indiana students as far as further education. Okay. So they announced this, and what that program does is it pays full tuition it doesn't pay room and board but it pays full tuition for recipients to go to a college in, or university in the state of indiana any any there's no restrictions on that whether that be purdue or iu or ball state notre dame notre sure. dame butler some right. of those some of those schools it doesn't matter um what they want to do is be able to help um, the students obtain that education, and sometimes that is a uh, that financial piece is really a huge part of it. Yeah. And so, being able to offer that and say money is no object in this case, you can go where you feel you would fit the best, get the education that you want. So, um, Lily started that and has continued to support that, and that's that started um, the first year. There was one recipient, and it's varied since then, anywhere from one to three recipients each year um, in our community, and we'll be um, actually announcing the next recipient um, sometime in towards the middle of December. Okay, we'll look um, forward to that, Brian. So that'll, that'll be exciting. Um, but that, that was one thing that Lily said, again, we want local people to kind of get together talk about what's important in your community and um, it also helped kind of get more name recognition for community foundations throughout the state so lily has started this program this gift program to help build foundation growing from a handful to 94 community foundations and and the lily scholarship was part of that the reality is, too, who knows better than your local community exactly what's happening it, there? It is, because what what really was happening was the Lilly Endowment folks were sitting in Indianapolis and receiving <laughs> these grant applications right. from around the state and sure. saying, well, these all sound like good projects, and they are all good projects. But they said, us sitting in Indianapolis don't know what you need in Rochester. That's right. Or Akron, we want people in Akron to be able to say, yes, these are all good projects, but what we really need right now is this. And so that was really Lily's ultimate goal to be able to help start that. And we'll talk um, in future programs kind of about some of the different phases. Okay. But um, it, it was really wise because what Lily would do is they would offer, um, we've actually been through six phases. Um, the first two um, are the ones that in the time frame of the gifts and things that have happened that we've talked about today. Um, next month we'll be talking about phases three and four. Okay. Um, and those were really starting um, 2000, or 1997 through 1998 time frame and, and 99 and some projects and some recognizable projects that have happened in those. But um, the first couple of phases, really what they wanted to do was encourage local community giving. So they said, we will match. And they've, they've matched 
at various levels, anywhere from fifty cents on the dollar to upwards of three three dollars on each dollar given. Um, but they said we want to be able to help you get to that point of being able to sustain a foundation locally, but we also want to be able to give you some dollars. So they said, we'll match this if you can raise community dollars. So now we have local community supporters and Lily helped get foundations. Um, Fulton County and the Northern Indiana Community Foundation are to that point where they're sustainable um, yes, on their own. Excellent. So <coughs> it's it's been really great to see that um, process happen and we always say thanks to our donors right. that's that's really the biggest part of this and we continue to have support um, in that we're just looking at some um, some numbers this year and you start looking at you think over 12 million dollars given out in grants and scholarships well that that is a pretty amazing number, a number when you start looking you at our community so it, it's really wonderful to see that so so those are just kind of some of okay. the first, the first fund, the first grants, the first Lilly scholarships, and, and we'll get into, um, like I said, phase three and four on next month's program. Um, but it's it's been exciting to see where it started, and it all goes back to this group of people say, you know what, that sounds like a good idea. 80 if, years ago, Brian. That, that, and then 25 <laughs> years ago here locally, That's we right. had those people that said, you know what, this sounds like a good idea. We think we Let's can do, do it. it. Sure. And look what it's turned into today. We get the comment we from board members that were part of that original group and said, we really had no idea where this was going. We just knew it was something that was, was a really good thing. Tip of the so. hat, too, to Ted Wagner at that time, who was uh, kind of instrumental. I mean, yes, all yes. the board was instrumental in getting it going. The Baxters had the first gift, but yeah. I kind of remember Ted behind the scenes was, doing yes. some of the legal work to get he, this all He did together. a lot of things, he not did. only legal work, but was also a board member that, that right. did a lot of things as far as just um, getting the word out and also encouraging folks and, and facilitating um, those types of, of things right. to happen in our community. So um, we appreciate Ted, and, and he's done more than... More than what we always say. So, um, but that that was really a good group of board members that got together and said we can do this, and, and they did. It's it's turned into something that, um, like I said, is beyond what most people thought would happen. So, well, just a quick reminder about what we talked about today: um, scholarship applications. If you're watching this on on Channel Four after December first, they're probably up on our website okay. nicf.org. Um, Check those out if you are a graduating senior. Um, Giving Tuesday coming up November 28th from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, again, if you're watching this program after November 28th, take a look at our website That's to right. see some of the things that happened on Giving Tuesday. Still not too late to give. Still not too late to give. And, and like you mentioned, year end, um, right. there's... there's some things that you can do um, in our community and maybe save some taxes. So I'd encourage folks, check with your financial planner or your, um, or your accountant and, sure. and talk to them about one of the questions is, is how much would it cost me to make this gift? Because sometimes somebody wants to do something, but they don't think they can do it until you look at what it really costs and the savings that you would realize by making a gift to, whether it be the community foundation or a charity that, that supports a cause um, that you're passionate about. So I'd encourage folks to think about that as we look at this time of giving. Okay. So, so, well, if you have questions, again, you can find information about the foundation on our website, nicf.org. Um, you can like us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. You can give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas or questions you have about the foundation or um, talk about supporting a project that you think may be something good for our community. Okay. Brian Johnson, as always, thanks very much for being here. And to remind our listeners, stop by and see us on Giving Tuesday. We'll have a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it. Brian, thanks. Thanks, Tom.